Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to look at the second class overview for the classes that are available in Dark Deity. Part 2, we're going to cover Ranger. Okay, so, classes in Dark Deity are split up into six different trees, with Ranger, Warrior, Cleric, and Mage available during the first mission, and then Rogue and Adept coming shortly thereafter. Like I said, today we're going to go through a pretty comprehensive guide on everything to do with the Ranger class and their promotions what you can expect from using ranger characters, where you can take them, stats and skills, all the information you need to play in a ranger character accordingly. Naturally, if you want to avoid spoiling the class unlocks or the characters that are available later in the game, you should probably turn back now because there's going to be spoilers, uh, there's going to be lots of them from here on out. Rangers don't really fit the typical arc type of tactical RPGs and having them exclusively use bows regardless of their class progression. Dark Daddy more leans into the character being an actual ranger, rather than just an archer. This means that the class can be played quite varied. You can take range early and finish on melee, or vice versa, or stick with a particular range all the way through. If you like a particular class skill on melee but want to end up as a sniper, you certainly can go that way, or to end on range as your preference, you know, there's a lot of freedom there. We're going to start with the stats and abilities of the base class in Ranger itself, then the stats and abilities of each of the promotional options at level 10, and then finally the stats and abilities of the final promotions at level 30. The base class, as I mentioned, it's called Ranger. The damage type for Ranger is Projectile, their armor type is Chain, they have quite a high movement range for a base class, it starts at 6, and their attack range is exclusively 2, meaning that if someone gets in front of you by one tile, you can't attack or return attack. The class skill for Ranger is Grant an adjacent ally plus one move this turn. So you move next to an ally, you use your class skill, and then when it's that, when you select that unit, when you have them take their turn, they can move an extra tile. The promotions for, uh, uh, for Ranger, sorry, when you reach level 10, begin with Archer. Damage type stays at projectile, but your armor type will change to leather, you'll keep 6 movement range, your attack range will stay at exclusively 2, and you'll gain 2 class skills. The first of which is that your critical chance is increased by 7.5% per adjacent ally, um, and because the archer can attack at 2 range, it's really easy to position yourself to get this bonus. The second class skill is that you'll get a 1.25% times accuracy bonus from whatever your dexterity stat is. The whole class in general has pretty good dexterity growth rates, so it's pretty easy to get a nice bonus from this. The second option for your level 10 promotions is Drifter, and your damage type will change from projectile to cleaving when if you pick Drifter from the base class. Your armor type will be chain, which is the same as your base class. Your movement range will stay at 6, but your attack range will change from exclusively 2 to exclusively 1. You'll become a melee unit rather than a range unit. Pretty simple. Drifter has quite good class skills, so I see a lot of people opt for Drifter early, then move away from it late when it's less appealing. The first class skill for Drifter is crit damage modifier increased by 50%. So instead of doing double, you'll do 2.5 damage whenever you secure a critical hit. The second class still for uh, range, uh, sorry, Drifter is crit is increased by 25% if only one adjacent unit. That doesn't include diagonals, you have to be directly beside. So if you only have one adjacent unit next to you, you get a higher crit chance by 25%. You can see why these two skills are really effective if you're going for critical hit builds later on. Good to pick up Drifter early and it builds into pretty much any crit build regardless of your level 30 promotion. Your third option for the Ranger promotions at level 10 is Strider. The damage type for Strider is Slashing, your armor type will be Leather, your movement range stays at 6, and much like Drifter, your attack range will move from 2 exclusive to 1 exclusive. You'll be a melee unit just like if you pick Drifter. The first class skill for Strider is that if you perform a, a double attack, if you double up, then the second attack in those will do an extra 25% damage. This works quite well with the aspect that also provides that bonus, taking it up to a 50% extra damage. Um, and the second class skill for Strider is extremely good, halves the effect of weapon weight. So you can double down on your weapon advancement quite early without really having to worry about not doubling because you don't have the speed. 
Your last option for promotions at level 10 for Ranger is the Witch Hunter. Your damage will remain projectile, going from Ranger to Witch Hunter. Your armor type will be chained. You'll gain an additional point of movement range, taking up to seven tiles. Your attack range will remain exclusively two. And the two class skills for Witch Hunter are the first being your power is increased by 30% against enemies that use magic. And the second is that when you grant a unit haste, you will also give that unit 20% defense while the haste is active. So move next to a unit, provide them the extra resistance and movement speed, then perhaps take on the commander of the boss of the level. It's a really good combination. Um, it's worth noting that, yeah, Witch Hunter is a mounted unit. So A, it uh, contributes towards the mounted unit achievement, and B, it has quite high movement range for this stage in the game, level 10. Once you hit level 30, you'll be given the option to again promote your unit, um, and you don't have to necessarily take the canological option of your previous class into your second. You don't have to go Archer into Sniper or Witch Hunter into Green Knight. You can pick any of the four, and it doesn't matter which first class you picked. With that said, you can create some pretty interesting um, builds, Pretty interesting units with how much variance you get on the class skills of a melee unit into a ranged and vice versa. So the first option that you have for level 30 promotions is Sniper. The damage type for Sniper is Projectile, the armor type is Leather, you remain at 6 movement speed unless you're coming from Witch Hunter, in which case you go down from 7 to 6. Your attack range for Sniper is uniquely 2 to 3, they're the only unit that can attack from 3 range. And as such, their first class skill is, as you can expect, can attack from 3 range. But enemies will still counter-attack you. Just because they can't attack from 3 range doesn't mean they won't counter-attack you when you engage them for free, from 3 range. It takes this class skill from being probably one of the best, if not the best, into just being alright. Yeah, you can attack from 3 range and there's a bit of utility there if you don't have a lot of movement. But enemies are going to, to counter-attack you regardless if they're ranged, so it's not as good as it might sound on paper. The second class skill for Sniper is Accuracy is plus 35% if you haven't moved. So, throw your Sniper in the middle of the fray with some evasion, and then pick off enemies without moving, you get a boost to your accuracy. But it's not the end of the world if you have to move, you lose that accuracy you're probably still pretty likely to hit if you've chosen the growth rates that include Sniper. Your second option for level 30 promotions for Ranger is the Outlaw. This is the canological option from the Drifter. You can go there if you like. The damage type for Outlaws is Cleaving, their armor type is Chain, their movement range is 6, and again, they're just a melee unit so they only have one attack range. The first class skill for Outlaw is again pretty good, it's a crit damage increased by 50% again, meaning if you had uh, not taken Drifter in the first place, you get an extra 50%, but if you take Drifter, you get the 50% from that class and the 50% here, taking your criticals up to triple. The second class skill for Outlaw is that you will ignore 50% of the enemy's defense stat if you only have one adjacent unit, again, doesn't include diagonals, they need to be beside you. And that's pretty good, 50% of their defense stat is just gone. Your third option for Ranger level 30 promotions is the Blade Dancer. The damage type for Blade Dancer is Slashing, their armor type is Leather, they have a 6 movement range, and they remain a melee unit. They have only one attack range. Your first class skill, if you decide to end as a Blade Dancer, is your power will be increased by 2% every time that you dodge an enemy attack, but it caps at 30. So if you're going a dodge tank route with your eternal aspects and with your first and second class picks, Blade Dancer is a really good one to end on. You get a lot of benefits there, you get really strong really quick. The second class skill for Blade Dancer is that you are guaranteed to hit the enemy if they're below 40 HP. So if they're low, you're definitely going to hit, you don't have to worry about any external factors, and you're probably going to kill them if they're below 40% if you've got the right Blade Dancer set up. Your final option, and is again a mounted unit, counts towards the mounted cavalry achievement, and you'll have increased movement range, is the Green Knight. The Green Knight is a ranged unit, so their damage type is projectile, their armor type is plate, very hardy uh, armor type. They get an increased movement range all the way up to 8, it's the second highest value that there is, it's pretty good. 
Their attack range is exclusively 2, so if something gets in your face, you're not going to return attack. The first class skill for the Green Knight is that when you apply your haste to an ally, they'll also get 20% fortitude, so you can get the additional defense earlier in the Witch Hunter class skill, and then you get the fortitude later in the Green Knight. It makes it a pretty good support class. The second class skill for Green Knight, again, plays into them being an anti-mage. Half of Magic Unity's enemies' magic stat will be added to your damage, so whatever you know, if your opponent is using magic, whatever half their magic stat is, you just do that as bonus damage. It can be really good taking care of pesty mages that want to nuke down your susceptible allies. The characters that you're going to run into in Dark Deity who can play as a ranger, you can pick any of these class options. The first is Garrick, you'll start with him. And his default skill is crits deal 15% extra damage. As you can imagine, if you take Garrett down the crit damage route of Drifter Outlaw, you get really, really high crit damage, or you can just pick up one of those and end on ranged. Very, very potent crit damage dealer in Garrick. The second is Sophia and her ferret, and her default skill is her ferret butter has a 20% chance to attack, adding 20% to damage. So whatever your damage or your power would be, you have a 20% chance of doing an extra 20%. The third ranger you'll run into is Caius, Caius, not too sure. Either way, his default skill is that you just get 20% of accuracy after you move. Um, as such, this sort of tends to Caius being a better melee ranger than he is a ranged ranger, because a lot of those later options prefer you to stand still, get set up, but then after that not do a whole lot of moving. So if you want this bonus, Caius works well as a melee unit. Next is Maeve, and her default skill is defeating an enemy gives you plus 30 dodge for one turn. That isn't one attack, you don't get an additional 30% dodge on the next enemy to attack you, it's the entire turn. It's just about as good as it sounds if you get an enemy defeated quickly in your turn with Maeve, make her a priority when it comes to maybe someone else whittling down an enemy and her finishing it, then she becomes a very effective dodge tank. Your last collection for the Ranger recruitments is Rose, and her default skill is that she is just defaultly less likely to be targeted by enemies, and you can combine this with the eternal aspect that influences how likely you are to be targeted, and you can put Rose pretty much anywhere, and they're just going to ignore her while she peppers them. Makes her a very good sniper because she doesn't need to worry about evading or getting into position because enemies aren't going to attack her very often regardless, especially if you give them a better option or you have an ally who has the equipped aspect of increasing their chance to be targeted. So, set up Rose with less likely to be attacked as her default skill, which you don't have much of a choice, um, and then with the eternal aspect as well, throw her in the middle of battle, and then you don't have to worry about moving, just pepper people away with their sniper, and you get the accuracy bonus. So that's going to wrap things up for our overview, it's a quick overview of the Ranger class and Dark Deity. If you've had particular success with specking a character down a certain class line, grabbing specific level 10 and le level 30 class skills to end up somewhere, well, we'd love to hear about your success or your failure, as it might be, on the MGN.GG blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, check that out, and our new Discord, it's popping off in there. Links for all these are going to be in the description of the video overview, so make sure you drop by. Thanks for listening. This has been the Ranger Overview.